On Monday, the United Nations Security Council finally passed a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. It's been over five months since Israel began its genocidal war on the people of the territory and close to 32,500 people have been killed. And it is only now that the UNSC has managed the resolution. A major culprit in this has been the United States, which vetoed three earlier resolutions calling for a ceasefire. On Monday too, the US did not support the call. Instead, it abstained, leading to the resolution passing as the remaining 14 members supported it. However, the major question is if Israel will heed this resolution. It does not appear to do so as attacks continue on Tuesday. We go to Abdul to know more about the resolution. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. A very important vote in the UN Security Council, quite an unprecedented one. This issue has come, the issue of the ceasefire has come up at the UNSC number of times. We know, of course, who has been the villain in all these discussions, that's the US. But take us through what this new resolution says, what is the exact text, uh, you know, and what was, the, what was the pattern of voting at the UNSC? Well, Prashant, uh, the resolution is quite was quite different from the resolution which we were we were talking about next week, which was presented by the U.S., which primarily talked about uh, uh, did not talk about uh, that much about a permanent ceasefire or the need of it, but a kind of um, uh, oh sorry only was only expressing the need of it, but the resolution mostly pre uh, prepared by the non permanent members. Uh, of the UN Security Council basically demanded clear in the clear cut term that there should be a ceasefire, immediate ceasefire uh, for the month of Ramadan at least, and there should be a, a negotiations for making it a permanent uh, ceasefire. That is the first part of the resolution. The second part of the resolution also talks about uh, the uh, need to uh, release all the uh, hostages which the Palestinian resistance groups have, uh, the Israeli hostages. These are the two things which the resolution uh, talks about. And as far as the uh, uh, voting is uh, voting pattern is concerned, of course, the U.S. Uh, first opposed uh, uh, amendment, uh, which basically, uh, uh, which was uh, brought by some of the countries talking about uh, 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 kind of uh, making a, a, a permanent ceasefire now, uh, basically, finally decided to abstain from the voting, and that basically allowed the rest of the countries. None of them opposed it uh, to uh, uh, vote in favor of the resolution, which ultimately led to uh, the acceptance of it. So, uh, 14 members, uh, including the four uh, permanent members, voted in favor, uh, which also includes France and UK, and uh, uh, except for the U uh, and the US abstains. So that was the uh, pattern of the voting. The uh, the most important part uh, of the uh, the entire proceeding was that U.S. decided not to uh, veto the uh, the resolution, which basically demands a ceasefire. Uh, uh, and this happened for the first time. So uh, uh, the difference between the uh, uh, vote on uh, Monday and the uh, previous votes was that U.S decided not to veto uh, uh, the resolution which basically clearly states uh, ceasefire uh, 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 which clearly demands ceasefire in gaza uh, uh, we should remember that previous on the previous occasions at least three times us used this veto wherever uh, the resolution clearly stated the need uh, clearly stated ceasefire in the in the document and and that basically is the primary thing which makes it different from the previous uh, resolutions, uh, uh, even uh, those who were voted on the United Nations Security Council. Right. Abdul, now in this context, the most important question is what does this mean on the ground? Do we see the possibility of uh, this being enforced in any way? What has been Israel's response? And what happens if Israel just refuses to accept this resolution, which seems like a likely response from them? Well, Prashant, uh, there is, uh, if, if we go by the uh, uh, international law, the, this resolution is enforceable. Of course, if the United Nations Security Council decides to enforce it, implement it, uh, they can easily uh, force Israel to do so. There can be repercussions for Israel, there can be sanctions, there can be other uh, measures taken by the Security Council. But if Security Council decides to do that, uh, and if uh, and given the fact that U.S. has been reluctant to take any step uh, to kind of make uh, Israel follow or uh, uh, implement the resolutions which were under uh, which were adopted by the United States Security Council in the past, uh, 
that is difficult at this moment to say that there will be a punishment for Israel if it chooses not to uh, implement uh, uh, the resolution. As you rightly pointed out, Israel has so far as, uh, uh, has kind of completely, you can say, rejected uh, any possibility of ceasefire at this moment uh, and in fact has threatened uh, diplomatic repercussions to, uh, to the U.S. in relations to the U.S., that if U.S. abstains or vetoes, uh, sorry, accepts votes in favor of such resolution which asks for ceasefire, they will kind of have some kind of diplomatic uh, uh, constraint, uh, some kind of diplomatic repercussion vis-a-vis -vis the relationship with U.S. And that, of course, between them. But and but since the fact is the U.S. carries the veto power, and 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 any uh, follow-up on the resolution will be. Uh, taken up in the United Nations Security Council. It all depends on how U.S. votes. So, uh, of course, this is enforceable. This should be implemented. Israel should implement it. Uh, and if it does not implement, there should be uh, uh, steps taken by the members of the United Nations Security Council. But given the fact that the U.S. has a veto and it may use it in the Security Council, that makes Israel's case, uh, uh, possibility that Israel may violate the ceasefire uh, resolution, uh, uh, more likely, given the their record and given their statements made by the Israeli uh, officials so far. Well, thank you so much for that update. We'll come back to you for the next story as well. The High Court of Justice in London has delivered its verdict in a case on whether Julian Assange can appeal against his extradition to the United States. The judges decided that he could appeal on very narrow grounds. That is, if the US did not provide certain assurances on the trial he would face when he, if he were extradited. The judges have said that the grounds of possible appeal have to do with Assange's First Amendment rights and the question of the death penalty. To clarify again, if the US does not provide assurances on these counts, Assange will be able to appeal against his extradition. Legal technicalities aside, he still faces a very serious threat of being sent to the United States, which could be deadly for him and will also be a huge blow to journalism across the world. We go back to Abdul for the details. Welcome back, Abdul. The verdict of the court has come just a few hours before uh, we are recording this show. So could you maybe, for the benefit of our viewers, tell, uh, explain what the verdict is, what does it imply? Well, uh, Prashant, uh, in the uh, uh, in the Julian Assange case, uh, the court, the uh, royal court uh, in uh, Britain, has basically, uh, uh, in a way, has granted uh, 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 you can say Assange's uh, uh, right to appeal, uh, uh, leave to uh, for appeal uh, in the higher uh, in the other courts uh, uh, against his extradition to the U.S. on certain conditions, and the conditions are that. Uh, 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 it has given basically the U.S. Uh, uh, almost up till April 16, uh, 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 you can say, a, a chance to provide assurances on three counts. And those three counts are that uh, uh, if Assange is extradited, uh, his, uh, uh, his rights uh, under the First Amendment of the United States uh, uh, um, Constitution, freedom of speech and expression will be protected. Uh, Second, because of his nationality, we all know that because he's an Australian uh, and uh, uh, U.S. may use it as an excuse to kind of uh, not grant uh, uh, Assange's the right under uh, 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 First Amendment. B because of his nationality, proceedings uh, uh, in the case will not be biased against it. And the sec uh, third, that uh, there will be no uh, death penalty in, in, in his, during his uh, uh, trial. Uh, uh, these are the th on three counts on which the court has given uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, a, a, a kind of six, uh, till April 16 to file fresh assurances. If it files the fresh assurances, there will be a next hearing on April, May or, and whichever date the court uh, decides. Maybe that is a tentative date uh, to basically discuss, uh, to examine those uh, grounds, uh, those assurances. If... Uh, U.S. chooses not to give fresh assurances or uh, not to clarify on these three stand uh, points made by the court. Uh, uh, Assange will be free to file an appeal against his extradition, which we all know the uh, courts have already uh, kind of granted. So uh, that's what the verdict says. Uh, uh, that is what uh, we know so far. Right, Abdul, but it does seem that the na the grounds are quite narrow because it, on the one hand, it does seem that all it is needed for the U.S. is to give some kind of a document with assurances, whereas Assange has not been given the option of 
for instance, claiming to be a political prisoner. He cannot bring fresh evidence uh, about for many of those issues. So, in fact, that seems to narrow the grounds a lot for Assange. Exactly. And uh, that shows the, uh, the, the overall proceedings uh, related to uh, this particular extradition of Assange is basically is happening. Some, there is some kind of, uh, you can say, understanding between the courts and the, uh, uh, maybe the bureaucracy or the states here and there that uh, Assange needs to be extradited that su satisfies their uh, uh, kind of uh, case. Uh, against uh, freedom of speech uh, and so on and so forth. That such kind of uh, 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 journalism or freedom of press will not be uh, tolerated. There is some kind of understanding which basically guides this kind of thing because as you rightly point, pointed out, the Assange has not been, uh, um, in fact, denied so, some of the grounds on which he basically uh, sought uh, 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 basically, right to appeal uh, to the higher judiciary, uh, to the judiciary, uh, uh, basically appeal, uh, file appeal to other courts. Uh, uh, as you rightly pointed out, there cannot be fresh evidences provided, and so on and so forth. Uh, as Amnesty International has already pointed out, that uh, even if those assurances are provided by the US, there is no guarantee that they will be carried out the way uh, uh, it, it has been uh, mentioned. Uh, even in, in the submission in the court and in any uh, other uh, uh, fora, because uh, there have been records in the past that the U.S. Uh, uh, basically state has been very vicious. They may take give some assurances at this moment, but uh, in the at the later stage they might revoke it, uh, finding one excuse or the other. So entire proceeding does not give, of course much hope at, at this moment about uh, um, uh, the entire case. And, and it seems that there is some kind of collaboration, of course, behind the scene, diplomatic understanding behind the scene, which basically prevents uh, uh, Assange's, uh, his right to uh, under, uh, 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 his right uh, under the law, his right under the, uh, the overall uh, freedom of speech and expression and freedom of press in particular, which basically has been... Uh, so the, the verdict overall, uh, this in, uh, this verdict overall is not as uh, 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 not seen as uh, uh, clear on uh, on the point of extradition, uh, on the appeal, and so on and so forth as it should have been in uh, otherwise. Abdul, thank you so much for that analysis. And that's all we have in this episode. We'll be back with a fresh daily debrief tomorrow. Meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.